All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er day one of the draft video. And, of course, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle. Check them out in Corte Madera and in Emeryville. They're open Wednesday through Sunday in Emeryville out in the East Bay, and they're open seven days a week in Marin County from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. All right, the question is, what did round one of the 49er round one of the nfl draft mean for your 49ers our 49ers my 49ers um well there's a lot of ways to look at it okay first let's just go through not every pick impacts them but houston drafting cj stroud second overall takes houston out of any kind of quarterback interest in in uh, trey lance or anybody else for that matter so obviously that impacts things quite a bit um for for you know as far as where's trey going uh you can take the colts off the board as well they drafted anthony richardson they obviously don't need a quarterback you can take carolina as a team off the board for trey lance because they drafted bryce young so just quarterback wise it kind of means that uh there's multiple teams that no longer need trey lance now you said where who does need trey lance I mean, the only teams, New England, Atlanta, Tampa Bay, possibly, but the teams that I think have probably make the most sense would be Minnesota as a you know replacement for Kirk Cousins eventually, Tennessee to replace Ryan Tannehill. But the team that makes the most sense are the Washington Commanders. Uh, the Washington Commanders have the 47th pick in round two. They have the 97th pick in round three. They have the 118th pick, I think, in round four, and the 150th pick overall, which is in round five. Um, they have the draft pick arsenal and the need to um, to trade for Trey Lance. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I mean their quarterbacks are Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett, so Trey would be a major upgrade for the Commanders. Um, but yeah, Trey's trade market you would think is pretty pretty dwindling, right? Because um, what, is New England getting rid of Mac Jones? Is Atlanta getting rid of Desmond Ritter? Is Tampa not going to go with with uh, Baker Mayfield? Um, I don't know that those teams are looking for a quarterback. And then is Tennessee going to stay with Tannehill, or are they going to go with somebody else? Is Washington going to be interested in Trey? Is Minnesota interested in Trey? So Trey's future, not that clear, but there's a couple of teams that, you know, going into the first round could have been options that are now not options. As far as the other imp- other moves that really impact the Niners, I think the biggest one is Seattle getting Devin Witherspoon. I mean, Seattle can't stop the run, and that's a big problem for them. But they now have three big-bodied elite corners. They got Tariq Woolen. They got Devin Weatherspoon. Both those guys are true shutdown outside corners. You got Kobe Bryant. He won the Thorpe Award at Cincinnati. So you're you're talking about a, a secondary that now has three young corners. And I see John Schneider kind of tr- trying to recreate the Legion of Boom. Um, and I thought Witherspoon was one of the best picks in the entire in the entire first round. So that's the first one. The Niner receivers are going to have a hard time getting open down the road against Witherspoon and and Woolen and Kobe Bryant if Seattle can put any pass rush on the quarterback. Um, but Seattle still pass rush is a question mark. And um, and then to me, you know, I was looking at Seattle later in the first round, and I was thinking, okay, Seattle's going to wind up taking. Kalijah can't see because he was falling to them. He was on the board going into the 19th pick. They picked 20th. And I was like, oh, my God, if they wind up with Devin Weather- Witherspoon, uh, m- maybe the best corner, and then Kalijah can't see, maybe the best defensive lineman, that is not going to be good. But can't Kal- instead went to Tampa and Seattle went with the Ohio State receiver Jackson Smith Nigba um, at the 20th pick overall, who I'm a very productive player, but um, – you know, I, I I I like him. I don't love him. Let's just say that. So, as far as what Seattle did, they improved their secondary. That's something to look for. Now, Detroit is kind of an interesting team because they're kind of quietly building. And outside of the Eagles, I would say Detroit's kind of the up and coming team in the conference. They took Jameer Gibbs. Now, Jameer Gibbs with David Montgomery and some of the other weapons they have there, that gives them a dynamic player. Um, so I like that pick, but then they reach for Jack Campbell at the, with the 18th pick, who's a good linebacker, solid linebacker from Iowa, very productive, very safe pick, but kind of a low end pick as far as upside potential. Um, not everybody sees it that way because Campbell did have some great workout numbers as well, and he was very productive. So maybe Detroit went two for two, but um, 
you could argue that they reached a little bit. To me, the big takeaway is, is Atlanta going to be a contender in the NFC now? They got they drafted B. John Robinson. They've got a really good offensive line. You have Kyle Pitts. You have Drake London. Uh, you, you have Desmond Ritter. I mean, they're really establishing some outstanding pieces to the puzzle. B. John Robinson's a franchise back. Kyle Pitts is a terrific young tight end. Drake London is an outstanding big-bodied receiver. Uh, they already have a really solid offensive line. Um, if Ritter comes of age and their defense comes around, Atlanta could be a contender in the NFC South. The big takeaway for the Niners and what it means, though, is what happened in Philly. Because what stands between the 49ers and a return trip to the Super Bowl are the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles responded to losing Javon Hargrave to the Niners by drafting Jalen Carter uh, at number nine. And Carter, a lot of people thought, was going to go number one in this draft. And he was just... He's a very athletic, big-bodied uh, defensive tackle who can rush the passer. Now, there's baggage there. He's got off-the-field issues. There's maturity issues. He wasn't in particularly good shape. But if somehow the Eagles can reach Jalen Carter and motivate him and get the best of the best of Jalen Carter out of him, watch out because the guy's an enormous talent. Um, so that stood out to me. Is is Jalen Carter Javon Hargrave? No. But if Jalen Carter's super motivated, he could be a huge player for the Philadelphia Eagles. So that one stood out to me, uh, the Eagles getting Javon Hargrave. And then let's let's mention their other pick. You know, at the very end of the draft, the Eagles are the end of round one, I should say. They got Nolan Smith, who's 245 pounds and runs 438. And man, they've got this this uh, this desire for these Georgia players. Last year, Jordan Davis and and Nicobe Dean. This year. Uh, you know, you've got you've got, uh, you know, um, some incredible talents out of Georgia going there. You know, big time players, Jalen Carter and, and Nolan Smith. I mean, you're talking about two of the best athletes on the front seven. So my takeaway was that the Eagles, if they can, they took two really high end D linemen. They all they had 70 sacks last year and they just and they lost Hargrave. But you just added Nolan Smith and Jalen Carter. And if those guys play to their talent level, the Eagles have just gotten a whole lot better and are probably the, still the team to beat in the NFC. So th those are my takeaways pretty much. It was, damn, the Eagles got better. Um, damn, there's a couple places that, you know, yesterday may have been homes for Trey Lance that now probably are not interested. Um, I thought New England made a terrific pick. Uh, at 17, they traded back twice and took Christian Gonzalez, the cornerback from Oregon. Getting him at 17, I thought, was highway robbery. That was a terrific pick. I thought Baltimore getting Zay Flowers um, at 22 was a terrific pick as well. But as far as you know, what this first round of the draft meant to the Niners, it's really about the Eagles. And if the Eagles, they took two super talented defensive linemen, that are going to give them more pass rush and more dynamic athletes on their front. And they are the team that stands between the Niners and the Super Bowl. So that was not good to see. And Detroit got a couple of underrated players that they may have reached for, but they're good football players. Um, and Seattle got a big corner that is a dominant player. I think a really, really, really good player. So... That's what stood out to me. The other one, as far as Dallas, you know, Dallas, I think, should have gone Michael Mayer. They lost Dalton Schultz in free agency to the Texans, and instead they went Mozzie Smith from Michigan. Now, Mozzie Smith's a big two-gapper, nose guard, um, freaky athlete. But, man, you could have found similar players on day two or day three. And to pass up on Michael Mayer when you badly could use a tight end after losing Dalton Schultz, I thought Dallas kind of swung and missed. Um, so... Dallas, I thought, swung and missed. Detroit had a couple interesting picks. Um, but it's really, it's about Atlanta building a nice little piece, a nice little puzzle offensively with B. John Robinson and Philly taking two really high-end players and Seattle looking like they're going to have a terrific young secondary. So that's kind of what stood out. Um, as far as, you know, who's still available after round one, I mean, Isaiah Foskey's there. Michael Mayer's there. Uh, both those guys are are guys that I'm sure the 49ers would love to have. Riley Moss, a corner out of Iowa, he's there. Jair Brown, the safety out of Penn State, he's there. 
Julius Brents, the corner from K-State, he's there. There's a couple really good receivers the Niners looked at. Jonathan Mingo out of Ole Miss. Jaden Reed out of Michigan State. Um, an offensive lineman, Cody Mock, is still there. Uh, Jartavius Martin, the safety from Illinois, is there. Marvin Mims, another receiver from Oklahoma, is on the board. So there's some good guys there, but they're still all of the second round to go and then all of the third round. You know, you're, you're at pick 32, and they pick at 99. So even the, the best players that are on the board, by the time the Niners pick at 99, most of them will be gone. But, yeah, the big takeaways, Seattle got better in the secondary. Um, Detroit seems like they really were happy with the picks they made. And Philadelphia had 70 sacks last year and may have added two of the more dynamic uh, front seven players in the entire draft. So that was my takeaway. Uh, 49ers didn't get involved. They didn't wind up moving Trey Lance. We'll see if it happens in day two or day three. But overall, the three teams I think you got to watch out for in the NFC all got a little bit better. Detroit, Seattle, and Philly. And really, it's about Philly. It's Philly and the Niners. The Niners and Philly. And I think it's the way it looks on paper, it looks like the next three to five years in the NFC are going to be about Howie Roseman against John Lynch, Nick Sirianni against Kyle Shanahan, Jalen Hurts against Brock Purdy, the Eagles against the Niners. Um, It's on. It is absolutely on, and Howie Roseman is the real deal. He had a very good day one of the draft. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being a proud sponsor of The Krug Show. And thanks, thank you to everybody for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.